All right, so this is part one of our final exam review. We're almost done, almost done with math seven. In the first slide, I need you to simplify the expression. So you're going to combine like terms, combine like terms where possible. Okay, so I combine my x's together, 3x plus 8x. Because they both are terms with x's, I can add their numbers together. 3 plus 8 is 11, and we just talked about the fact that it's really important to pay attention to the sign in front of the number. So 12, is 12 positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Negative 12 minus 6 is negative 18. And I can't combine it anymore because one term has an x, the other term doesn't. They're not like terms. That's it. Okay, now on the next one, I have this problem that I cannot subtract 3x minus 6. I have to do the distributive property. What does distributive property mean? You have to distribute into the number. You've the got to multiply the number on the outside by every term inside the parentheses, and then you can simplify. Go ahead and try that one. Yeah, so 2 times 3x is 6x. So we bring down our numbers, plus 6x, and what's 2 times negative 6? Negative 12. Negative 12. All right, now, is there anything in here that I can combine together? 10 and 15. 10, not 15, but negative, negative 15 and negative 12. 12. Don't do that. I mean, you can do it mental math, but why not just use your calculators? 10 minus 15 minus 12. All right, don't make a silly mistake there. Recognize what terms you can combine and then use your calculators. 10 minus 15 minus 12 is what? Negative 17. So 6x minus 17. There's nothing I can combine with 6x. All right, so simplifying expressions is combining like terms. We combine our x's together, we combine our numbers together, and that's, that's all we can do. All right, because we don't know what x equals. So in the next slide, we're solving equations. This is something that we've done all year. All right, um, solving equations, we're solving for x. We're using inverse operations to solve for the variable. All right, now there is something extra that you need to do on that first equation, though, all right, which we just talked about in the first slide. So make sure you do that and then solve for x. What do you do first on the first equation? Uh, 4x plus negative 2x. Yeah, very good. You combine your x's. What's 4x minus 2x? Negative, I mean 2x. Yeah, it's just 2x. So 2x plus 6 equals 18. Now you've got a two-step equation. So two-step equation, I've got to solve for x. What do I do first? Subtract 6, from Subtract 6 from 18. All right. What's my last step, Andrew? What do I do now? How do I solve for x? By very good. Divide both sides by two. X is six. All right. Go ahead and solve the second one now. Okay. What do I do to both sides first? Um, subtract twenty. Subtract twenty. And then four a equals what? Negative four. Negative four a. Wait. I mean. Yeah, yeah, 4a equals negative 4. All right, and then I divide both sides by 4a equals negative 1. All right, who got it right? Negative 1? Okay. Questions? Questions? You feel like the first one, you're kind of like, uh, and then the second one, you get a little bit better? Okay, so that's why we take a week to review for finals. You know, it's going to maybe take a little bit to, you know, work all that rust off your brains and, and refresh your memory, right? That's okay. All right, so we solved equations. Now we're going to solve inequalities. All right, go ahead and solve these two inequalities. Does anybody remember the uh, one exception to the rule between inequalities and equations has to do with dividing by negatives? What happens if I divide oh. an inequality by a negative? It's positive. No. Negative. What happens if I have to divide or multiply by a negative? Divide or multiply, it reverses my inequality. Oh, you yeah. remember that? 
Remember that? Okay. All right, so go ahead and try to solve these two. Anyone solving the first one yet? Okay, so what do we do first? You're going to sub subtract 9 from 21. Subtract 9 from 21. 3x is less than or equal to 12. Now what do you do to solve for x? Divide both sides by 3. And x is less than or equal to 4. So if I were to graph this on a number line, what number goes in the middle? 4. What number, two numbers go to the left? Negative right now. 3 and 2. What numbers go to the right? 5 and 6. Five and six. Open or close dot? Open. Close. What tells me if it's an open or close dot? If it's equal to. If it's equal to that line underneath, that means that it's a closed dot. It can be that number. That number can be a part of the solution. Now, how do I know if my arrow goes right or left? If it's less than or greater than. Okay, so we read our variable first. X is less than or equal to 4. Arrow goes left. All right, now that I've shown you that one, now on the second one, there's several tricks. But let's see how far you can get with it, and then we'll go over it. Okay, what do I do first? Subtract 8 by 21. No, don't subtract. It's already negative. Oh, add. You need to add 8 to both sides, and then you get 36 is greater than negative 4x. What do you do to both sides now? Divide by? Negative 4. Pay attention. Divide both sides by negative 4. If I have to divide by a negative, what happens to my inequality? No. no. It reverses. So now it's not greater than, but it's less than. But remember, we have to read our variable first when we answer this in order to get the arrow in the right direction. How do I read my answer? How do I read my answer? Negative 9. X, no. X is greater than negative 9. X is greater than negative 9. Open dot on the negative 9, and the arrow goes right. All right, so let's move on. So that's inequalities. You have, I think, two of these, those on your final. Let's move on to graphing functions. Graphing functions. Graph the function. What do you do? <laughs> How do you do that? Well, you need some ordered pairs. How do you come up with ordered pairs? Anybody remember? Oh, I, I know. Don't you, um, you can get out graph paper. Don't you, once you make a graph, do you fill it in with negative 1, negative 2, 0, positive 1? Yes. Do you remember that? You need to make an input-output table. But how do you know what x values to use? There's a standard set of x values. Remember now? Okay, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. What do you do with those numbers? You're going to put it in the, where the x is at. Plug them in for x into the equation. Whatever your answer is, that's your y value. Go ahead and finish up your input-output table and then graph the function. All right, so my y values, what are they? 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and when I graph them, it, it's a straight line on the graph. Okay, so you have one of those on your final. Now, you also have one where you're going to do slope. Do you, do you know how we got those points? Left two, up two, left one, up three, zero, four. All right. Okay, the slope is positive. Very good. The slope is positive on this one. Now, let's look at slope of these two lines. Okay, so we have lines A and B. I want you to find the slope. Don't just tell me positive or negative. Tell me the specific slope that it is. And remember, that fraction is rise over run. Rise over run. Now, your rise could be positive or negative, depending on which way it's sloping. So try to find the slope of lines A and B. So on A, is my slope positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Yeah, negative. And... What is the change in my rise from the first point to the second point? 
What is it? I go from a six to a two. So how many did it? Did it? It went down by four. And how many was my run? No, I went from a two to a five. My run is three. Negative four over three. What about B? It's going from four over two. It's um. Nope. No negative. The rise is four, but what is my run? Three. My run is three. My run three. Guys, I go from a negative five to a negative two. That's only three. Three units. Are you counting the actual dot as one? Don't do that. You just count how many spaces it goes, how many blocks. Negative five to negative two, it goes over by three. So my run is three. All right, you've got one of those on your final. How many questions is one? 50. Okay, uh, last but not least, solve the proportions. There are three methods we can use to solve the proportions. That is equivalent ratios, algebra, and cross products. I say cross products is the most consistent. Equivalent ratios can sometimes play tricks on your mind. Am I supposed to multiply or am I supposed to divide? I say just use cross products all the time. But whatever you do, I guess, is up to you. That's just my advice. So go ahead and try to solve these proportions. Okay, so I used equivalent ratios because what is the what is the missing link between 25 and 100? Four. 25 times four is 100. So what number times four is five? Well, I have to backtrack and I have to divide. 100 divided by four is 25. So five divided by four would give me 1.25. Now, if you did cross products, you should have got 100x equals 125 and divide both sides by 100, 1 1.25. Same thing. All right, have you done the second one yet? Go ahead and do your cross products and solve that one. Okay, so we do our cross products. 18x equals 288, divide both sides by 18. X is 16. Who got 16? Okay, very good. All right, so that completes part one of our final exam review.